Hi guys, welcome to my backup channel. Um, if you're new here, all the more welcome. If you're a returning follower, all the more, thank you. I think you're gonna find this would be a very interesting, what I believe to be a game changer in the pursuit of making a magnetic motor that's easy to understand and easy to make in your own home. What I've discovered here has enormous potential. And potential, I will be able to follow through with this over the next four or five days, and we will actually watch this in better action. But watch, what you're going to see is not faked. I'll show you underneath the table. You'll see there's nothing here. I took all that junk out from underneath there. Okay, this is the trash can. Pull this away. Okay, you can see this is all empty. Nothing up underneath there. Okay, so I'm just in my basic room. So it's finally got cleaned out. Should I say dug out? Um, you can see just my nice new science room or hobby room, whatever you want to call this place. All right, check this out. Watch what happens. What I discovered was that if the magnet is facing flat toward the magnets in a, in a traction mode, by, by the way, these are one inch by one inch magnets squared by quarter of an inch, and then one inch round magnets by quarter of an inch, these are all strength of N42. Over here, we have a cylindrical magnet, one inch tall by one inch thick, uh, N52 strength, and then more of the square and round magnets on top of this here. Okay, this is a motor, it's just a prop. This is irrelevant, I'm just using this because they stick to this motor real easily, and allows me to move this back and forth, and it's heavy. So this won't go slamming into these magnets here, uh, especially when I'm not holding it. But once I get it closer, as you'll see in a minute, I've got to hang on to this, otherwise it'll go crashing into this. As you will see in the previous video where I was hand-holding some other magnets, I didn't pull them far enough back, I let go of them, and it was a big accident, a big catastrophe. It went, I turned it about 15, oh gosh! Oh, it scared the crap out of me. Ah, oh, great. Now i got to get those unstuck. This is no fun, let me tell you. Well, I'm glad my fingers were not in there. <laughs> oh, okay, anyway. A big accident, a big catastrophe. A whash. Oh, it scared the crap out of me. I've never had an accident like that ever. In fact, this is my first accident ever of playing with magnets. I'm just glad my fingers were not in the way. Okay, so watch this. When the face is magnet faces, the face of this, it's flat, we get one effect. When we take this and just gently turn it, just a little bit of an angle, we get a different effect. However, if we leave this different effect, the wheel will not keep turning. If we leave this cause and effect like this, the wheel will not keep turning. If we use a combination of these two between here and here, the wheel will turn forever until the magnets wear out. So this is not perpetual energy. So now somebody also said, well, why don't you have one magnet like this and then just have another set like this? It won't work because the ones like this, Murphy's law of every uh, Newton's third law of motion comes into effect, which is for every action is equal and opposite reaction. So it does not work. If I do it like this and leave it, Newton's third law of motion once again takes over. So we have to have where the, this, the magnet pivots back and forth this teeny weeny little tiny bit. So there's a way to animate this to take the torque from here to make this move. For now, I'm gonna do this by hand. Watch this, this is really cool. Back the lens off a little bit maybe so you can see a little bit better. All right, now watch what happens as soon as I turn this. I'm not even gonna to touch the wheel, watch this. See how the wheel wants to automatically move? Okay, so now what I'm going to do here, let me start this and give a little nudge. Okay, now I have to time this perfectly, get a better view of the camera here. Okay, now watch, as soon as it gets here, get that little turn, bring it back. I mean, I've given it enough nudge. It's got to be done just right. Okay. To bring it back, let it a little tilt. Now, if I get this right, this goes faster and faster and faster. I mean, it gets really fast. I gotta get get this just right. 
Here we go. Now we're getting some speed. Come on. I've had this thing really smoking fast. Maybe I got it too close. Maybe not close enough. There we go. Now it's picking up speed. Anyway, when I get this exactly right, just it's got to be just right. So this is amazing how we can just change the angle of the mag a little bit, and this will turn indefinitely. So there are two ways to animate this or automate this. One, to put a disc up here, and with a, um, a nub here that goes onto an arm out this way. So as this turns, that little nub will go around and around circles, and it'll be attached to an arm, so that means It'll pump the arm back and forth with each revolution. Okay, like that. And then as it pumps back and forth, it'll be attached over here, not to this motor, but to a different system. And when it's 100 degrees, 180 degrees out of phase, it'll be like this. When it comes back around, it'll be like this. So it will automatically move this back and forth. All right. Now, the other way, and there's plenty of torque here. I mean, there's a lot of torque. Because that's the key ingredient in this. You have to have lots of torque. If we don't have that kind of torque, we're never going to be able to hook up coils from this and pull electrical energy from it. Because when we try to, it's going to bog down. The wheel's going to stop. So torque is everything. And, and I have lots of torque here. So imagine the amount of torque I'll have when I put stators all the way around. Okay? So the other way to do this is just to put this on a pivot. Because I've noticed that... Oop, show you here. These magnets here, let me show you here. Get on the edge here. The magnetic field is on the edge. It's not in the middle. It's out here on these edges. So when we have this here, close to this, this magnet wants to tilt about that much. So you can see that. That's about the, that's where it wants to rest. I'm not doing it with my hand. You just have to take my word for it. Okay? Or go set up a wheel like this and get a magnet and, and do this yourself and you'll see. So, this is the natural position it wants to be in. Not like that. I force that over. But if you turn it like this, then it wants to tilt and make the wheel turn. So watch. Do this straight. Let it tilt naturally. It's a natural position. I'm going to turn it back. Let it tilt. I'm going to turn it back. Tilt, and we'll turn it back, tilt. It's about a 12, 15 degree angle at most, okay? This will go on for years like this. So, until the magnets wear out. So, my thought is, is to make it so this magnet's on a pivot, and it will automatically pivot when the magnet comes around, because it wants to pivot anyway. Right, right there, that's where it wants to pivot to. Let me, yeah, right about, that's what it wants to pivot, right there, that angle. That's automatic. And then spring load it so it'll come back automatically after the last magnet has passed. So if that will work, and I'm not sure if it will actually work or not, uh, and, you know, and keep the wheel turning, if that does, it makes this real easy. Otherwise, we're going to have to go back to the arm where the arm is coming out and pumping this back and forth. The trouble is, how are you going to do that with multiple uh, what you call it, multiple uh, stators all the way around. So the only thing I can think of is we'd have to have some kind of track system that goes all the way around that's linked up. And so when you turn one of these by hand, it'll turn all the other ones as well, but they'll be set in a position to be at a certain point in time with the timing of this. That's how our A-cylinder car engine works. So there's actually a timer, or what's called timing chain, I think the old days, they used to call them timing chains. So this, in my opinion, is a game changer. This is really worth chasing. So I haven't seen anybody on the web with this. 
Um, and probably now we're going to see somebody who's going to also start fooling around like this. But this is, in my opinion, a game changer. And we'll see if this is a dead end or if I'm really, truly onto something. And by the way, the way to, I'll cut a circle out of this here is Lexar plastic. I just put it up here and mount it. And then I'll put that little nub there. And then armature comes out here. And then each time the wheel, when it's in 180 degrees phase over here, this will be like that. Then as it comes back around, this will in turn come set back to zero as this comes back. So this is zero. And then at the 180 degree phase, it'll turn like that. Then it'll come back like that as it gets ready to come around again. All right, that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you all. Um, some fascinating stuff here. So I'm at the 10 minute mark. I want to let you all go here. I'm going to add a, a little snippet of video at the end of this. So you'll see where I had it going really, really fast, real sweet. All right. Uh, thank you for visiting. And for those of you who continue to support me financially, and some of you are actually donating materials, thank you. It's a big help. I'm retired, I'm on a fixed income, and I have to be real careful with my money. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm going to outlive my money, and that won't be pretty. Alrighty, I'm going to let you all go. Again, thank you so much. Take care.